हेलो सर गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन स्टॉपिकोडक्ट एंड अनदर थिंग इज ग्राम स्मिथ ऑर्थोगनलाइजेशन those are the topics first uh, instead of starting from here uh, let us uh, give some definition of definition from previous days so what is isomorphism suppose p and w are two two vector space over f then a map t from p to w which is linear and bijective those types of maps are called isomorphism okay so what are the example if you consider this r2 to not r2 let us think it r3 to the polynomials space of polynomials uh, every element has degree less equal to 2 then suppose this map is defined by t of a0 comma or instead of a0 let us write a0 a0 a1 a2 it is same as a0 plus a1x plus a2x square now you can see that though those two things r3 and p2 are different but we can view as the same thing why because t is linear you can check the linearity that is t time t of c alpha this is same as c times t alpha and another thing is t of alpha plus beta this is same as t of alpha plus t of beta you can check that this property is holds and another thing is that this map actually bijective because what will be the kernel for this map if you take suppose a0 comma a1 comma a2 this belongs to kernel of t then you can see uh, this implied t of a0 a1 a2 this should be zero and this imply the polynomial by definition this is same as a0 plus a1 x plus a2 x square so this is zero but when a polynomial is zero this imply all the coefficients are zero This imply all a i are zero for all i, and this imply the polynomial is itself. Uh, and this imply those a zero a one a two. This is actually a zero vector. Therefore, kernel of t it is actually zero. Kernel of t zero means t is injective. 
now we need to check on to on to ness so how do we check on to for surjective take any polynomial a0 plus a1x plus a2x square you can find a inverse of this polynomial what will be the inverse the inverse is the same a0 a1 a2 so though those two spaces are not same one is spaces of polynomial another is r3 okay but they behaves same their vector space structure are same and another important thing i have need to tell, tell that a suppose v2 a a linear map from v to the field a so those types of linear maps are called linear functional what will be an example suppose t maps from polynomial p2 to real number so a0 plus a1x plus a2x square apply t on it it will be coefficient sum of the coefficient or any multiple suppose two times a0 then you can see that this map is linear okay all the properties of linearity satisfied by this map and another thing is that so since this is a linear map we'll we'll say t is linear functional those types linear functional those types of linear maps are called linear functional because the codomain is field the field itself and the interesting property of this map is that the kernel of t will be either for those types of maps kernel of t will be either zero or there is only another possibility which will be a space having dimension equal to dimension of v minus 1 okay so kernel will be one less dimensional why this is true because you can see that it is by rank nullity theorem right that you can say rank sorry rank of t plus nullity nullity of t which is same as dimension of v now from here it is clear that nullity of t this is same as dimension v minus rank rank of t now if t is not a zero map then t will generate the whole f okay if t is non zero then the non zero vector suppose t sends a vector to a to a real number c or complex number c then this will generate the whole field okay so you can see that if it is not if it is not a zero map then the rank of the uh, t rank of the map t it will be one because the image will be one dimensional the dimension of the field it is same as dimension p minus 1 when when t is 1 0 and another thing i should say is that given a linear map t maps v to p those types those those types of maps are called linear operator now if v is finite dimensional dimension of v is finite for this case injective will automatically imply surjective 
okay so if we want to check if t is bijective or not t is isomorphic or not we just need to check either injectivity or surjectivity okay why is it true this is because of the same fact rank nullity theorem because you can see suppose injective those are equivalent so suppose t is injective then this is if and only if kernel of t is same as zero and now the rank nullity theorem will say rank of t plus kernel t kernel t is now zero dimensional so zero this is same as dimension of the domain dimension of t so from here you can see that this is same as rank t is same as dimension of v that is dimension of the codomain because codomain and domain are same for this case and this will imply that v is subject t is subjective right those are two important fact Let us start the definition. What is inner product? In a vector space, we have seen the structure of addition. There is addition structure, and there is another structure, which is scalar multiplication. Okay, we can multiply any scalar with a vector. and we can add two vector also those are the uh, properties from the vector space but the question is can we multiply two vectors the answer will be yes sometimes we can multiply so for example we have earlier seen that suppose this is the vector i and this is another vector i plus j this is i okay from physics we know that we can multiply those two things i dot i plus j that is dot product dot product usual dot product and this is same as i times i which is 1 and i times j which is 0 that is this is same as 1 now we can mimic this idea to any any general vector space and for this we will define so what those dot product satisfies what properties are those those dot product satisfies so one property is that if you to take two vectors v1 and v2 then if you add with another vector v3 suppose this is v and this is v1 v2 then this we should satisfy the property distributive property v1 times v2 v v times sorry v times v1 v times v2 and another thing is that this is same as cv times w if we stretch and then uh, take a dot product with another vector this should be same as first take dot product and then multiply so those are the properties it should satisfies and another thing you can say that v v comma w dot product of those two thing should be same as dot product of the reverse order and another property is that is why is that if you take two same thing 
then the dot product can never be negative thing. so v times v is always zero always positive and it is zero if and only if v is zero so those dot product satisfies those those four properties and in any vector space to begin the definition we can impose those four condition okay so in general v plus dot this is a vector space over field a then we'll say this is also an inner product space inner product space If it satisfies those four properties, that is, there is a inner product structure, which inner product which is a map from V cross V to the field itself. Okay, to the field, we we can multiply two vectors and we will get a scalar. For example, here we have multiplied those two vectors and we are getting the real number one. This is an, uh, one property and it should satisfy V times or let us denote it by U, U times V plus W. This is same as U times V plus U times W. Property 2 it should be same as cu times v some scalar into u times v this is same as the scalar times the inner product inner product of up and what will be the third property third property will be the symmetry u times v is same as v times u okay but this is for over the real field, if we are not considering real field, for example, we can consider the complex field also. For this case, we'll take conjugacy. Okay. For real field, conjugation does not uh, affect anything, but for complex number, it will be a plus i b, it will be reverse, that is a minus i b. And Another property it should satisfy is that u times u, inner product of same vector, it will be always non-negative. It will be greater or equal to 0. And it is 0, u times u is 0, if and only if u equal to 0. So those are the properties. So consider an example. the standard example will be like this consider r2 we can give a inner an inner product structure so define suppose x1 y1 a vector from r2 and another this is v1 denoted and another vector is x2 y2 then what will be the dot product dot product will be component wise multiplication x1 times x2 plus y1 times y2 okay so it is the usual dot product we have already familiar with this how do we check this if it is dot product or not so the thing is that suppose this is v2 so suppose proof okay. take v u v w three vectors u v w and denote it by x1 y1 x2 y2 
and x3 y3 and you can see that those properties are satisfied that is u times v plus w this is same as x1 y1 then sum of this sum of this means it will be same as x2 plus x3 then y2 plus y2 and this is same x1 comma x2 plus x3 by the definition dot product is multiply the first component and multiply the second component add those two things so multiply the first two components and now we will multiply those second components so it will be y1 times y2 plus y3 now sorry this is now sum multiply and add by definition okay so this is actually same as x1 comma x1 times x2 plus y1 times y2 and we can write separately x1 times x3 plus y1 times y3 now by definition by definition this is same as x1 x2 x1 y1 comma x2 y2 dot product of those two vectors okay and the second thing it is actually u u dot v and the second thing will be u dot w that is the notation will be like this inner product similarly you can check other properties so multiply the first vector with constant cu and then take the inner product this will give cx1 comma cy1 and the second vector is x2 y2 now the definition of inner product this will be cx1 times x2 plus cy1 times y2 take c out so it will be c times x1 x2 plus y1 y2 and this is same as c times x1 by definition the inner part is same as x1 comma x y1 times this times x2 comma y2 okay from this from this property and another property so those two properties are satisfied okay so this is so those are called i think linearity and homogeneity so this is called linearity and this is called homogeneity and and the property should be that u times u the inner product okay for this case it is x1 y1 times x1 y1 you can see that by definition this is x1 square plus y1 square and we know that square of two real number is always non negative now when u comma u when is it zero this will imply that x1 square plus y1 square should be zero and this only happens if and only if x1 y1 both are zero and this is same as saying x1 comma y1 this pair is zero equivalent to the vector u itself so all the properties are satisfied by this definition so from this we can say this is actually a this is actually an inner product yeah. the definition this 
is a inner product. So for check another example for complex number C, okay, is the multiplication for real number from the previous uh, previous definition it is clear that for real number we can define the inner product inner product we can define by this formula that x comma y inner product is multi multiplication by this that is take one vector x1 another vector x2 the inner product can be defined in this way multiply component wise there is only single component so multiply those two things now can we do that for complex number also so this is inner product this is inner product space ips vector space together with inner product structure this is called inner product space and for complex number can we mimic this so if we define here we have not check the symmetry property so u times b this is actually same as b times u okay or conjugate of this because for real number conjugation changes nothing it will remain same so you can check that u times b is same as b times u so it is symmetry symmetry is also satisfied but for complex number can we define like this so take two entry z1 comma z2 z1 z2 are from complex number can we define the inner product in this way z1 times z2 will it be inner product so if we want to check those property first property will be linearity that is take two entries z1 plus z2 and take inner product with another vector so by definition this is same as z1 plus z2 times z3 by distributive property this is same as z1 times z3 plus z2 times z3 and this is actually z1 z3 plus z2 z3 so the first property is satisfied now if we multiply by some scalar here c is from complex number c multiply with z1 then take inner product with z2 so by definition this is same as cz1 times z2 and we can pull c out so it will be c times z1 z2 because we can take the bracket here so we can take c outside so it will be uh, the scalar property is also satisfied now we need to check the symmetry so z1 times z2 z1 inner product with z2 this is actually z1 z2 now will it be same with z2 times z1 but will it be same you can see that z2 times z1 bar by definition this is z2 z times z1 and then take the bar conjugation so clearly this may not be true because complex multiplication is always commutative so for example take uh, counter example for this take z1 equal to 1 and z2 equal to i then z1 times z2 this is same as i but z2 times z1 but this is actually minus i because this is i but now we need to take conjugation this will be minus i so those may not be same therefore the third property is third property property 3 fails here hence this is not an inner product 
okay complex multiplication is not a inner product now can we modify this so take c suppose cn or for example take c3 we can define the inner product in this way that is take two vectors one is z1 z2 so how can we denote this z1 z2 z3 and another entry is w1 w2 w3 define the inner product by this way that is z1 w1 bar z2 w2 bar up to z3 w3 bar define the product now the question is is it an inner product or not is it an inner product you can check those first three properties first two properties are obviously satisfied that is linearity and homogeneity those properties are satisfied so we can start from symmetry conjugate symmetry okay so denote it by u and this is by v those two vectors now u times v by definition this is same as z1 w1 bar z2 w2 bar plus z3 w3 bar now if you take v times u by definition this should be same as w1 w2 w3 inner product with z1 z2 z3 and this is by definition star from star it will be same as w1 z1 bar plus w2 z2 bar plus w3 z3 bar and this is same as because you can write in this way so you know the fact z bar if you take double bar double conjugation you are getting the same thing okay so you can think that w1 is same as w1 times w1 double bar and z1 bar so you can take the bar outside then it will be w1 z1 plus w2 bar z2 plus w3 bar z3 and whole bar of this thing okay all right so this is same as now you can see if you compare this compare this this will be from here you can see this is nothing but u times b but with a bar because there is a bar present here so now the modified version we have taken the modified version instead of multiplication we are taking a conjugation of the second thing for this version symmetry conjugate symmetry holds right so conjugate symmetry holds now we need to check another thing uh, another property so another property is it says symmetry holds symmetry is always short form of conjugate symmetry for this case conjugate symmetry because it is not actually symmetric but there is symmetry but and we are taking conjugation of that thing so it, this property holds here we need to check another thing that is multiplication of same thing it will be always non negative what we usually see in real number if you multiply the two same thing it will be always positive always non negative but for complex number this property also fail because take i times i okay 
the multiplication of i times i it is negative one which is not non negative thing but for our modified version will it hold or not let us check by definition u times u bar this is same as z1 z1 bar plus z2 z2 bar plus z3 z3 bar. and we know that multiplying with the conjugation this give modulus square so first one is z mod z1 square then mod z2 square and the third thing is mod z3 square so now you can say this is non negative because modulus is always a non negative thing and we are taking square and we are adding those those three things so it it will be a non negative thing now if we assume the inner product u comma u this to be zero then this will imply the modulus should be zero that is mod z i square this sum is zero but sum of non negative thing is zero this will imply those are in individually zero for all i this will imply all z i are zero because when modulus of complex number is zero it is zero if and only if the complex number itself is the zero itself is zero so z i is zero for all i i equal to 1 2 3 3 and this imply this tuple z1 z2 z3 this is actually zero 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 that is zero vector right so now we can see all the properties of inner product all the properties are satisfied hence the new definition this actually gives an inner product structure on c3 okay the modification here instead of just multiplying we have taken conjugation of the second thing right this is the modification of the property so from here we can say that this is actually inner product consider another example so consider those function space function space of continuous function that is which is defined by space of all function from x to c which is continuous suppose here instead of writing x let us denote it by c it will be easier to see so define f times g by this integration Integ integration from 0 to 1 f times g bar that is f times g bar of dx the question is is it inner product is it an inner product you can easily see that this is actually a vector space all continuous function because adding two continuous function will give another continuous function and if you multiply with some scalar this is also a continuous function but can we give an inner product structure on it so if we define in this way will it be an inner product so this gives a complex number f times g bar if you integrate this will be a okay so instead of c to c let us you know do it by r to r because from 0 to 1 we cannot integrate complex complex things 
but for R to R, we can now integrate. So will it be an error product or not? Let us check. So a plus g times h. You can see that this is same as instead of bar, now we can take f times c. So this is same as a plus z times h dx. And this is same as f times h dx plus z times h dx. And this is nothing but f times h g times h by definition, right? And another thing is multiply with some scalar c f times g or times h whatever you take times g this is same as by definition 0 to 1 c times fg dx now you can take c out so it will be c times 0 to 1 f times g dx and by definition this is nothing but f times f inner product with f product with g so those two properties are satisfied now we need to check another property that is symmetry. Here symmetry is also clear. That is, if you uh, interchange f and g, it will be same, right? So symmetry is also clear. We need to check other properties. That is, if the f times f if it is zero it is non negative or not so f type f times f this is f dot f dx so now we can say that since the inner part this is actually non negative thing so this will be always zero right why is it true? It comes analysis because something is zero and f is continuous. Moreover, f is continuous. This will always means that there exists something is sorry uh, no it, it is actually clear right because the inner part this is always non negative thing so the integral itself will be a non negative this is direct it follows easily from analysis and another thing is that if we assume f times f this inner product is zero it is only possible when f is zero how do we prove that f times f is zero imply mod fx square dx this is zero now when a integration is zero what does this mean so this is only only possible when the fx is zero for all x that is f the continuous function f is identically zero why why is it true because if you assume this inner part, if you assume this is non-zero, since this is a non-negative thing, so assume, suppose at point x0 belongs to 0, 1, fx0 is non-negative, so fx0 not equal to 0, then there exists a neighborhood. By continuity, there exists a neighborhood x0 minus delta, comma x0 plus delta, for which fx, if x belongs to this neighborhood, fx is uh, non-zero. Because for codomain, you can choose, it is if it is non-zero, it will be either positive or negative. You can choose the neighbor, neighborhood around that, okay? And for which 
which it will be non zero by continuity it is directly from the definition of continuity so around that neighborhood the integration the this thing is always always have some positive modulus because you are taking square of those things so the integration will be uh, will be some positive thing sorry some strictly positive it will be some c times that neighborhood right c times the length of that neighborhood c times 2 delta okay so that means that fx non zero at a single point it is not possible so fx is zero everywhere for this neighborhood for this interval hence if it is trivially zero that is f is identically zero so all those properties are satisfied by this product hence f is actually inner product f is uh, sorry the definition this is inner product so those are some natural examples let us take another example so given the r2 the space r2 and define now define in this way take alpha equal to x1 x2 beta is y1 y2 two vectors from r2 Okay, alpha beta from R2 and define the inner product alpha inner product with beta by this formula x1 y1 minus x2 y1 sorry minus x1 y2 plus 4 x2 y2 now the question is is it an inner product structure will it be inner product or not so you can see that and this thing can be written in this way so all those property all the other properties linearity homogeneity those property will be easier to verify we only need to care about the fact if the inner product of same thing will it be positive will it be non negative or not so let us check this so alpha times alpha by definition plus y1 by x1 x1 and y2 by x2 so it is x1 square minus x2 square sorry uh, x2 times y1 replace y1 by x1 so x2 x1 minus x1 x2 plus 4 x2 square so this is same as x1 square minus 2 x1 x2 plus 4 x2 square now we can write it as x1 minus x2 square x2 whole square plus 3 x2 square so from here you can see that this is actually non negative thing okay so uh, and another property is if we assume the inner product of the same thing is zero then from here from the above you can see that this will imply the this thing should be zero okay and this is if and only if those are actually if and only if x1 minus x2 this is zero and 3x2 square this is also zero the second second thing will imply uh, so first one will imply x1 equal to x2 the second one will imply x2 equal to zero and this is equivalent to saying x1 x2 are both zero so x1 x2 is zero vector from here you can say that the above definition is an inner product okay therefore 
it is an inner board. For any vector space, there can be many different inner product. And if if you notice that uh, actually this inner product, this comes from another basis. So standard basis will give the inner product x1, x2 plus y1, y2. Sorry, for this it will be x1 times y1 plus x2 times y2. The inner product for with respect to standard basis, the natural inner product will be x2 times y2. But instead of, if we take different basis, then you can write this thing as same as x1 dash, y1 dash, plus x2 dash, plus y2 dash. You can write this with respect to some different basis, okay? Different coordinate system, will you can reduce this to that standard inner board. Though it, it is not clear, but you can reduce this thing. Take another example. So, two matrix, given two matrix, A comma B, from MN, N by N matrix. Now you can define the inner product. The standard way that is you can think a and b are those n, n cross n tuples that is you can think a as n square tuples b as n square tuple right every increase every ij increase is now a tuple you can think it as n square tuple right so you can define inner product like this a comma the inner product of those two things it will be sum of aij times bij bar we are thinking in complex field so we have taken bar mn over c so this gives inner product structure another inner product will be like this So actually this is same as trace of a comma b bar a dot b bar okay a comma b star that is conjug uh, take transpose and take conjugation so why this is true it is easy to see so A B star, what will be IJ trace of trace trace of what will what is trace meaning of stress? So trace of some matrix A X it is the sum of the diagonal angle X I I okay I equal to 1 to N. Now for A B star, what will be a typical diagonal angle? It will be like this so first of all what will be let us multiply here it is by definition this will be a i j thin tree then b star j i thin tree where j varies from 1 to n okay that is how do we multiply those two vectors? We take this and this row and column, and similarly, so it will be a i j entry, and this is b j i entry, right? So we have written those two things, and we have taken all those, all those uh, corresponding to all those rows, all those entries. So this is the definition of matrix multiplication, and from here. This is same as a i j plus we are taking transpose of this so b star j i this is same as b times i j because 
ijth entry of transpose is same as jth entry of that matrix okay and instead of star, uh, transpose we are taking star so here we need to take conjugation also so this is same as this so j varies from 1 to n now what is the meaning of trace trace of a b star this is actually same as taking sum of all those entries a b star all the all those diagonal entry i i equal to 1 to n take all the diagonal entry and take their sum and actually this is same as from here if you put it here this is sum i equal to 1 to n then j equal to 1 to n a i j b i j bar right and here you can see this matches with this definition we have uh, though we have denoted it by two different notation actually this aij think this aij is same as capital aij okay there are different notation for matrix entries we have taken two different notation but those are actually same all right so here from here it is clear that trace is inner product trace of trace in this way trace of a time b star this is an inner product but you can check it directly because from the definition it is clear linearity will hold but if you take inner product of those two thing it will be trace of a a times a star and it is non negative right from this thing you can check all those properties that is from here it is clear that this will be non negative and another fact is that if you assume this to be zero that is sum i comma j take all a i j square this is zero then each in entry should be zero because sum of mod to sum of positive thing sum of non negative thing this cannot be zero right because this modulus is always non negative so this imply all a i j are zeros for all i j from here it is clear that it is even on leave the matrix a itself zero matrix so trace a b star defines an inner product right so we have seen example inner product there are two properties which are satisfied by the inner product uh, one if the and take square of the norm okay here the norm norm the not length of a vector okay so how do you define length you can take inner product of those two things and take Uh, since this is actually non negative because inner product of the same thing will be non negative so you can take square root of this thing and the positive square root this will give the norm of the vector for example if you take the standard inner product r2 with standard inner product okay r2 equipped with the standard inner product is called euclidean space euclidean dn space so if you think r2 as euclidean space then what will be norm of 1 comma 2 this vector from definition 1 square plus 2 square so this is 3 square root okay for c 
if you consider c c2 suppose c2 then what will be norm of i comma 1 this vector from definition it will be square root of i comma 1 inner product with i comma 1 inner product of those two things right and previously we have defined the inner product in this way i times take the component wise multiplication but do the conjugation of us i times i bar and similarly one times one bar right this is same as mod i square which is one plus one that is root so those are the example of length so an interesting property is norm of alpha plus beta square this is same as so let us do it is same as alpha plus beta in our product with alpha plus beta if you use the properties of inner product it will be uh, same as so think this a single element and those are two different so it is sum of alpha times alpha beta plus beta times alpha beta we have taken distributive property now again distribute so here it will be alpha comma alpha alpha comma beta first distribution of this and distribution of this will give beta comma alpha plus beta comma beta so the first thing will give norm of alpha square by definition by definition of norm this is norm of alpha square and this will give norm of beta square now you can see that alpha beta and beta alpha bar we know that beta alpha bar this is nothing but alpha comma beta conjugate of this by symmetry okay by conjugate symmetry of inner product if you use this property this is alpha comma beta and there is another bar of this okay this is a this complex number and this is conjugation of this and you know the fact z plus z bar this is actually two times real z real part of z two times of this so from that you can say sum of those two things this will be two times real part of alpha beta so this is an interesting property okay in general it is an easy exercise if you do lots of multiplication you will get this property that is inner product of alpha comma beta this is one fourth of summation i n norm of alpha plus i to the power n beta okay you can check this there will be these two multiplication together with another multiplication this will give this formula so if norm if you can find norm you can define inner product so inner product defines a norm and conversely norm from norm you can define an inner product by this formula right so those are the properties this identity actually called polarization identity Here, let us check this question from the exercise. So, given A is two by two matrix, 
and instead of 2 by 2 let us take n by n matrix and consider that r n cross 1 that is column space okay there is, there are n entries in a single column so define inner product on this r n cross 1 this vector space we are we are trying to define inner product so the definition is like this take two entries x comma y from this r n cross 1 x y belongs to this and multiply in this way x transpose a y we can multiply in this way right so actually this defines an inner product we need to check that as usual symmetry and the another property uh, linearity linearity and scalar multiplication that property will be easier to check so if you wish to check this property x comma x this is zero this is same as x transpose a x is zero right so this sorry for this we need to satisfy the uh, positivity condition that is x transpose a x is positive this will hold for all all x belongs to r n cross 1 we need to satisfy this property also so this may not satisfy for all or any n by n matrix for example take minus of identity if you take this matrix a to be this matrix then this may not satisfy okay so this product this product may not be an inner product because if you take a to be minus identity take any two vector then this this may not be positive right for example if a equal to minus identity then take x equal to this vector 1 0 0 then x transpose ax this is actually same as uh, minus 1 0 0 and here transpose of x 1 double 1 and 0 everywhere so from here it is same as minus 1 right so this is not greater equal to 0 therefore this this definition this may not give an inner product may not be inner product so the interesting thing is when will it be inner product if though this property is satisfied then this will be inner product but we need another property another property is symmetry that is the thing x comma y this should be same as y comma x and this imply x transpose a y this is same as bar of this okay. this is same as by definition y transpose a bar x okay so this will satisfy if you take a to be like this so this is actually x a bar y transpose of this right sorry 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 for this uh, we need this to be satisfied x comma y inner product of x comma y this is same as inner product of y comma x and take bar of this uh, by definition this is same as y transpose a bar x and 
this will satisfy if and only if for all x y a equal to a bar transpose okay you can check this property from the multiplication directly if you do the multiplication for matrix entry entry wise then this will satisfy it if and only if a equal to a bar transpose okay so from here if those two properties are satisfied property one is x transpose a x greater equal to zero for all x and the thing is a is conjugate that is a is same as a star if those two are satisfied then this will give an inner product okay so this is called actually uh, there is a name for this matrix this is called positive definite matrix for example if you take a to be identity then this is actually same as multiply this x x transpose with x right x1 up to x2 up to x n this is the standard definition that is take modulus of everything and to square this thing. okay so you can say that identity is actually positive definite matrix because identity satisfies all those property x transpose x is non negative for any any x and another thing is conjugate uh, conjugate transpose of identity gives the identity itself so for those type of matrix it will be inner product now another interesting thing is that inner product there is an identity it is called pythagorean identity so take any two vector add those two vector it will be always less equal to norm of alpha plus norm beta okay that is you can see so in r2 suppose there is one vector uh, v and the vector w then that is this vector is alpha this is beta then alpha plus beta is given by this right this is alpha plus beta so hypotenuse is always modulus of this length of hypotenuse this is always less equal to length of base and length of um, this thing beta right so this is true for any inner product this this is the uh, property this property is also can be checked very easily because uh, okay Sorry for that. Uh, this is actually called Cauchy squares inequality. Not not an identity. This is actually this is called Cauchy squares. Cauchy squares inequality, right? So. Uh, the uh, proof is not so hard you can very easily prove this fact because uh, if you take norm of this right this is 
from the previous thing this is same as alpha square plus norm of beta square plus 2 real part of alpha times beta by the uh, we have already proved this thing and we know that real part of alpha real part of any any uh, complex number this is always less equal to modulus of this so this is 2 times mod alpha beta inner product of mod alpha inner product of alpha beta so this is less equal to norm alpha square plus norm beta square plus 2 times this okay and now another thing is that another thing we need to see that this is also true inner product of those two things is always less equal to norm of alpha times norm of beta so this this is also true so we can write it norm of alpha square plus norm of beta square plus 2 times norm alpha norm beta this is norm alpha plus norm beta whole square now you can remove the whole square okay if you cancel those square you will get the inequality right Actually, uh, I have written the correct thing, but actually this inequality called Cauchy scores. This is actually called Cauchy scores inequality, and this is the usual Pythagorean or triangle triangle inequality. Sorry, here we go. So if you apply the Cauchy score inequality, then you can see that we have, uh, in particular for Rn, we know that if you take the product A1, B1 up to An, Bn, then square of this, this is actually less equal to square of individual a1 up to a n square into b1 up to b n square this is a particular example of squatchy scores inequality right because this side you can see that this is the squatchy scores inequality and this gives a particular example because the left hand side is inner product of those two vector inner product of a1 up to an with another vector b1 up to bn and the right hand side this is actually norm of this norm of a1 up to a1 and this is actually norm of b1 up to bn so from here we are getting this inequality the particular Cauchy squares inequality which is used and another another important example which directly follows from Cauchy square inequality is trace of a b star this is always less equal to trace of what will be norm of this norm will be trace of a star right norm means we are using this inequality this is inner product of the matrix a comma b and this modulus of this sorry sorry for that we need to take modulus so modulus because inner product may not be a real thing it can be complex number also so we are taking modulus of the inner product this is always less equal to norm of a comma uh, with norm of b and norm of a means take the inner product of a comma a and take the square root so it is trace of a star 
and the second thing is trace of BB star. This is an interesting corollary from the Quachi squad. Okay. <clears throat> now let us define another notation orthogonal set or orthogonal vectors whatever so given few vectors p1 up to vm those will be called orthogonal the notation is p1 is perpendicular to that is they are mutually perpendicular for all i not equal to z if those two things are not equal then those will be perpendicular okay so if the inner product is zero if vi inner product with vj is zero okay for example you have seen that i comma j those two vectors are orthogonal because what is i times j inner product of those two things is zero that is i is one zero j is zero one the inner product of those two things it is component wise multiplication so it is zero plus zero so it is zero right so this from the geometry we are trying to uh, trying to get a generalized case so this gives the general definition of orthogonality Okay, so let us see an example. So one minus one zero and one one zero. Are those three vectors v1, v2, v3? Are those three vectors orthogonal? What will be your answer? You can clearly see that this is actually orthogonal. Why? Take v1 times v2. v1 inner product with v2. So it is 1 minus 1, 0 times 1, 1, 0. So this is, by definition, this is point uh, pointwise multiplication, 1 times minus 1 plus minus 1 times 1, which is minus 1, and 0 times 0, that is 0. So this is actually 0. Similarly, check v1, v3, this is also 0, and v2, v3 is also 0. So those three vectors are orthogonal. Okay. Another thing is zero orthogonal, zero vector orthogonal to other vectors. So it is obvious that zero times any vector, this is always zero, right? Zero times take any any other vectors, this is always zero. Why is it true? Because uh, it follows directly actually. And you can write 0 times p. Why is it 0? Prove. 0 times v, you can write 0 plus 0 times v. And here, if you use distributive property of inner product, now you can cancel one one of the 0 comma p. This will give 0 equal to 0 comma p. Hence, it is clear that 0 is orthogonal to any, any other vectors. OK? Now another thing is that what are our orthonormal vector? Orthonormal. Orthonormal set or orthonormal vectors. So let V1 up to Vn are vectors such that property one they are orthogonal. That is Vi times Vj 
inner product of any two different vector this should be zero when i not equal to j and another property is now the norm are equal then those vectors will be called those vectors will be called orthonormal vectors okay and this set is called orthonormal set so let us check another example of orthonormal set so consider h n x which is same as e to the power 2 pi i n x and define f inner product with g so we are considering the uh, complex valued function okay from p to c functions function space from vector space v to c right we are considering this and the definition of f times g inner product is defined in this way f g bar fx g bar gx bar so x is a vector from uh, v so that is fx can be complex number so it is allowed for this case dx 0 to 1 So, are those e to the power two pi and i n x are those vectors orthonormal or not? So, what will be norm of this vector? From definition, it is clear the norm is square root of that is instead of norm, let us check norm square. So, norm is same as e to the power two pi and n x comma e to the power two pi and n x. now this is same as e to the power 2 pi i n x by definition times conjugation of this what will be conjugation of e to the power 2 pi i n x it is minus 2 pi i n x right and we are integrating from 0 to 1 so this gives now those two things will be cancelled so it will will get 1 times dx From zero to one, so this will give this will give actually one. So clearly, those those vectors has length one. Hence, length of H n this is one because square is one, so length will be exactly one because length is square root of this thing. Now. If you multiply two different thing, H M and H N, M is not equal to N. Multiply two different vector. If we take the inner product, by definition, it is e to the power two pi i m x times e to the power two pi i n x. Then integrate with respect to t x, e to the power two pi i m plus n x d x. Zero to one. This is same as e to the power two pi i m plus n x mm. by two pi i m plus n. Right. If you put zero one, both will be same thing. So we are getting zero here because put one. Because we know e to the power two pi i times any any entry any integer t, this is same as one, right? We know this fact. From here, it is clear one and zero. Those two limit will give the same value, and we are getting zero here. So any two different vectors are also non-zero. Here we have considered the sum m plus n is non-zero. Uh, if Even if m m and n zero, will there be any possibility for this? No, there will be no possibility. 
for example one possibility can be m is 1 n is minus 1 uh, for this for this what are what is the problem if m is 1 and n is minus 1 it will be 0 for this what will be the integration integration for this case also when m plus n is 0 here we have considered m plus n non zero okay even if m plus n equal to 0 then integration will be e to the power 0 dx right then it is clear this should be zero. this should be 1 so Okay, here n should be positive actually, otherwise there will be some problem. N should be positive. Okay. Uh, otherwise there will be problem like this. So n should be positive. So from here uh, we can clearly see that this actually this is an orthonormal set, right? Now, let us give an important thing, which is called the Gram-Smith orthonormalization or orthogonalization. Suppose V1 up to Vn is a basis for for this vector space V. Now, we want to create a orthonormal basis for V. Okay, orthonormal basis that is panning the same V, but now this new W1 up to W1, this should be orthogonal. Okay, this should be orthogonal. We need this thing, orthogonal basis those vectors will be orthogonal. So can we do that? Because working with orthogonal thing is easier, right? Because you can, uh, for example, suppose, suppose a vector V is written in the coordinate with respect to orthogonal basis, that is with respect to this V dash. So suppose uh, V is written in this way, V is C1 W1 plus C2 W2 up to Cn Wn. Then with respect to any other basis, it is hard to see what will be the coefficient. But for orthogonal basis, it is now easier because you just multiply V with Wy or Wz. Now this will give summation C i w i times w j i equal to 1 to So linearity from linearity and scalar property this is actually sum of C i times w i w j. Sum is from i equal to 1 to n. Now we can see w i w i are now orthogonal right orthogonal that is instead of orthogonal let us assume another step this is orthonormal length of any wi are one let us assume that then you can see that uh, wi times wj orthonormal means wi inner product is with wj this is zero and one if i not equal to j this should be zero and if i equal to j then length is one so it should be one so this is the definition of orthogonal orthonormal basis orthonormal sets so from here you can see that it will survive only for j other other thing wi times wj other will be zero because those are orthogonal so from here 
only wz this entry will survive and other entries ci times those will be zero so you can cancel those things hence you can write cj this is same as v comma wj by norm of wj square and for orthogonal orthonormal uh, norm of wj square is 1 so we can write v comma wj right so from here you can notice that working with orthonormal thing is much easier for example if you uh, want to know what will be representation of 1 comma 2 what we usually do to find coefficient c1 so it is it can be written as c1 times e1 plus c2 times e2 so to find c1 we just multiply this vector v with e1 so this is this will give 1 comma 2 times 1 comma 0 and the inner product is 1 similarly c2 will be 2 from here you can see that working with orthonormal basis is much easier because no coordinate you can find the coordinate very easily even for this case we can see what will be the coordinate okay for example if we consider this orthonormal this orthonormal set let us consider this this is orthonormal orthogonal we have already checked now Now, the question, hmm. this is actually orthogonal, so question is, what will be the coordinate of 1, 2, 3 with respect to this basis, this basis with respect to so in general it will it is much harder because we need to solve those three three system of equation but for orthonormal case we don't need those things okay uh, we can so denote it by p let p same as c1 v1 c2 v2 up to c3 b3 so from the definition we we have just said that uh, c1 if you multiply v v1 both side then only c1 times v1 v1 this will survive and another other vectors will cancel with because v2 times v1 this inner product is 0 v3 times v1 is 0 so c1 can be given by v times v1 by the norm v1 times v1 that is norm of v1 square and this will be for any any other vectors so for this case what will be 1 2 3 times 1 minus 1 0 what will be this by norm of v1 square norm of v1 it is you can see that norm will be square root of 1 square plus minus 1 square plus 0 square so it is same as sorry 1 plus minus 1 times 2 3 times 0 by root 2 right and this is minus 1 by root 2. similarly what will be c2 c2 will be p times p2 by norm of p2 square by the same way you can easily see that this is actually 3 by root 2 right and what will be c3 c3 is same as uh, we need to multiply this one with the last entry so this will be 3 and in this case the norm is square root of 1 square only so norm is 1 so from here you can see that with respect to the basis b the coordinate of this vector v 
it is actually first entry is minus 1 by root 2 second entry is 3 by root 2 and the third entry is 3 so you can see that it is much more easier calculation with orthonormal orthonormal or orthogonal basis is very easier okay now the gram smith process this will be helpful to find those type of things okay given a basis we can find orthogonal replacement of this that basis that is we want to create a basis which will be orthogonal orthogonal so grams meet orthogonalization the idea is very simple so suppose there is a vector v1 and there is another vector v2 so suppose those are two vectors now from the picture you can see that they are not perpendicular that is they are not ortho orthogonal with respect to the euclidean inner product structure so they are not perpendicular can we make it perpendicular? What can we do? So the idea is project this V1, V2 on the vector V1. So the projection will be like this. So what will be the projection? Projection is now V2. Projection of V2 on V1, right? Now the direction is given by this V1 vector. So So the projection this vector is given by v2 inner product with v1 right uh, we need to divide the norm v1 because we want to project v2 on v1 but now the direction is given by this unit norm v1 by norm of v1 so there is another thing so this will be the projection okay so this is the this projection now if we subtract this thing from this v2 okay subtract uh, this v, this projection from v1 from uh, from v2 then the vectors addition rule this will imply this will give this thing right This red vector is given by this, right? So this is the main idea for gram smith orthogonalization. So you can easily check that this new vector W and V1 is now perpendicular. And we can verify with our definition. That is, if you take inner product of W, inner product with W with V1, the new thing is V2 minus V2 V1 norm V1 square times V1. So it will be V2 times V1 by linearity minus of V2 V1. Sorry, there is another V1 norm of v1 square so you can take this thing out there is this v1 times v1 but you can take this coefficient out so it will be this right now you can see this thing this is actually norm of v1 square right so this will cancel with this now this is same as v2 minus v1 minus of v2 minus v1 therefore this will be 0 therefore those two vector those v1 if you denote w1 to be v1 and if you denote w2 to be the new v2 new new vector this w this is w2 
then we can see that this w1 and w2 is orthogonal and in general we will will do this step inductively right so given v1 up to vn a basis that is a basis for some vector space v now we want to create a orthogonal basis using this that is span should be v also and this new basis should be orthogonal so the gram smith uh, gram smith process says w1 choose w1 to be v1 now w2 w2 is given by v1 v2 minus the projection of v1 that is the extra thing this projection this was creating problem if you delete this then the new vector this new vector you can see the new vector is orthogonal so we are deleting the projection so w2 define w2 as v2 minus the projection of v2 on v1 okay uh, so this is actually norm of v1 square and inductively the process will continue we will take v3 now subtract the projection projection of v1 on v3 okay uh, sorry projection of v3 on v1 and projection of v3 on v2 so what will be projection of v3 on v1 it is v3 times v1 by norm of v1 squared times v1 projection of v3 on v1 now subtract projection of v3 on v2 remember in this way so it is on v2 square and, and it will continue continue in this way so you need to subtract all the projections projection of the previous vectors projection of v1 projection of v2 in this way you, you can get the orthonormal ortho non orthogonal orthogonal basis and the next step will be divide divide by norm if you divide it by norm you will get ortho normal basis right let us let us do an example then it will be easier Given this one x x square x cube, instead of x cube, let us reduce it. Otherwise, it will be much longer. Basis for polynomial, okay? Polynomial up to degree two, p two. We are denoting. This is a given basis. Now. find a orthogonal basis for p2 the question mm, the question will be depend on how we are defining the scalar multiplication uh, the uh, the inner product right so if the inner product a0 plus a1x Plus a two x square, comma b zero plus b one x plus b two x square. The standard way to define inner product is like take the pointwise multiplication, take the multiplication of each term, each coefficient, and take their sum. Okay, so this is uh, this is an inner product. For this inner product, if the question was given 
for this inner product then you can see that if you multiply 1 with x then it is same as because uh, what will be coefficient uh, there is no constant term for the second thing so it is 1 times 0 plus there is no coefficient of x for the first okay because you can see that this is actually 1 plus 0x plus 0x square and the second one is 0 plus 1x plus x square right so by definition this is same as 1 times 0 plus 0 times 1 plus sorry sorry here it is 0x square plus 0 times 0 so this is 0 similarly check the other things x comma x square this is also 0 and another will be so we need to check those two things and 1 times x square yes this is also 0 this will imply those are orthogonal and you can see that norm of any any of these three vector norm of x square it is same as 1 times 1 right square root of this so this is actually 1 so those are actually orthonormal basis with respect to this inner product now if there is another inner product so now the question will be interesting if the inner product is given in this way so define the new inner product f times g take two poly polynomial f is a, a polynomial this polynomial we are denoting by f and this is denoting by g then the definition will be multiply those two things and now integrate 0 to 1 okay f times g dx now the question will be what uh, how can we do orthogonal how can we find orthogonal basis for this out of this basis so here we can use orthogonalization because here you can see that one 1 and x is now not orthogonal because if you take inner product of 1 1 and x now you can see that it will be same as 1 time x dx 0 to 1 and this is actually x square by 2 uh, which is half non zero sorry sorry which is non zero so we can see those are now not orthogonal vectors. So the orthogonalization is given by Gram Smith. Choose W1 to be same as V1. V1 means the vector 1. So W2 is given by V2. Now delete the projection. Projection of V1. So how do you how do we write this yes it is v2 sorry projection of v2 on v1 projection of v2 on v2 there is another there is nothing so v2 on v1 so norm of v1 square into v1 and w3 so let us do this so v2 is x and what is v2 in our product v1 we have already find right this is actually this is actually v1 in our product v2 since we are working on real thing so it is the same as v2 in our product v1 because there is no no reason for taking bar right we are working on real numbers so v2 in our product v1 is half actually and what is norm of v1 square norm of v1 square means 0 to 1 v1 in a product with v1 right this is actually 1 so it is 1 and v1 is actually 1 so write it 1 so x minus half this is actually v w2 so let us find w3 w3 is given by v3 now delete the projections 
projection of view uh, projection on v1 projection of v3 on v1 so v3 on v1 so delete it and now v3 has another choice projection of v3 on v2 so v3 minus v3 on v2 delete this part you can see v3 was actually x square and what will be v3 inner product with v1 let us do in a rough v3 inner product with v1 right this is actually v3 means x and v1 mean 1 sorry v3 means x square this dx this is actually one third right and v3 inner product v2 0 to 1 x square x dx x to the power 4 by 4 that is 1 fourth and similarly norm of norm of v1 we know what is norm of v2 norm of v2 means x square times x square dx this is one fifth okay and similarly let us uh, we don't need now but what is norm of vt square it is x3 x s cube times x s cube dx so it is one by seven so if we put those values then it is x square minus v3 inner product with v1 it is one third by norm of v1 square norm of v1 square we have no uh, we we already we have five no, that is one and v1 means one minus v3 inner product v2 it is actually one fourth right norm of v2 square means one fifth this by one fifth into v2 what is v2 v2 was actually x so you can write in a beautiful way it will be x square minus 5 by 4x minus 1 third. so those will be orthogonal basis so w1 w2 w3 is required is a required orthogonal basis because there can be many different choices because you know this is this is also orthogonal set but if you rotate with some angle this will be another orthogonal set right so this is actually a particular orthogonal basis we can create many other for example if you multiply those things w1 w2 w3 with some scalar this will give another orthogonal basis so this is orthogonal basis and to find orthonormal basis what will be the next step divide everything by their norm okay divide w1 by norm of w1 norm of w1 actually one divide w2 this x minus half by norm of w2 sorry sorry norm of w1 is one what will be norm of w2 norm of w2 can be find can be found by the integration of x minus half a square okay let us complete this so the basis was we have figured out that w1 is 1 w2 is x minus half and w3 is x square minus 5 by 4x sorry minus one third so we can reduce it further and denote w1 dash by the unit vector corresponding to w1 since norm is 1 itself so it is 1 w2 dash denoted by w2 by norm of w2 so what will be the norm of w2 again norm of w2 square actually there is two things two parallel th so it is actually x minus half whole square dx 0 to 1 so actually it is x minus half whole cube by 3 put 0 to 1 
this will give what will be the answer it will be 1 by 8 1 third times 1 by 8 minus uh, 1 by 8 right this will be actually 0 so this is 0 no 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 0 cannot be the answer I have made some mistake uh, actually it is minus we have to take minus of minus 1 1 8 so it will be positive right so it is 1 by 12 so we need to divide x minus half by 1 by 12 so it is actually same as 12 uh, x minus 6 12 x minus 6 similarly what will be w3 does w3 by divided by norm of w3 you can easily integrate and you will get therefore ortho normal basis and ortho normal basis is given by w1 dash w2 dash and w3 dash so those are the interesting thing and there is another thing we i i should say that suppose v is a vector space and w is a subspace of v so and suppose uh, alpha 1 up to alpha m this is a basis for w now we know that there exists a complement for w right so we can write v is same as w direct sum with some another thing with some suppose w dash this is called complement of w in v so instead of complement we can uh, now find orthogonal complement okay orthogonal complement means mean All blue dash are orthogonal with the vectors W belongs to V. W belongs to W. So. Right? So this means W dash times W. This inner product should be zero. Now let us see an example. If you consider this subspace subspace of r2 r3 let v is r3 and w is the the xy plane that is generated by these two entry 100 0, 0, and 0, 010 0, spanned by those two entry which is same as xy plane now the question is what will be an orthogonal complement so we know that from geometry it is clear that any any other straight line which does not lies on uh, xy plane and passes through origin it will be it will give complement because any vector can be expressed as linear combination of this vector together with this xy plane okay but the orthogonal complement will be not this vector. Orthogonal means this vector should be perpendicular with all those vectors. So now for this case, orthogonal complement will be z axis. Okay. So for this case, orthogonal complement is denoted by uh, w power. W power means all x, y, z which such that x, y, z perpendicular to w that is inner product with any any vectors from w should be 0. This will imply that x, y, z should satisfy those three those two condition that is instead of multiplying with every vectors we will just multiply with the basis okay. So this will imply x, y, z inner product with 
वन जीरो जीरो दिस शुड बी जीरो अनदर थिंग इज एक्स वाई जेड इनर पोदर प्रोडक्ट इज जीरो वन जीरो दिस शुड आल्सो बी जीरो सो दिस इंप्लाई वाई इक्वल टू जीरो दिस इज इकन ओनली जेड इक्वल टू जीरो सो वी आर गेटिंग एक्स कॉम वाई कॉम जेड सच दैट y and z both are zero so clearly this is actually the straight line z axis so z axis is the orthogonal complement of xy axis and instead of uh, this geometry uh, here geometry is very clear we can easily see that perpendicular all perpendicular will passes through this z axis any perpendicular ve vector of this xy vectors from xy plane the perpendicular must be in z axis the orthogonal vectors but for other cases it will be not that much clear for those type of cases we need to check these two conditions those conditions that is multiplying with any basis entry this should be zero and we need to use this condition to find some relations that is here y and z is zero and this will give the subspace the complement w bar okay so let us stop now if you have any question please feel free to ask otherwise you may leave Let us go.